Hello, I'm Simon Gray from the Food Teachers Centre and today I'm in Loo on the quayside cooking some fantastic Cornish fish. I'm going to cook up some gilt head sea bream. Okay, and this is local sea bream. Now this is a fantastic local fish, completely different to the sea bream you'll buy in the supermarket. This guy, he's had time to grow, he's had a fantastic varied diet and that's resulted in a really full-bodied fish, lots of lovely flesh there. I'm going to pan fry this today, okay, I'm going for a nice crispy skin, okay, and I'm going to serve that with quite bold flavours. I'm going to make a chorizo and chickpea stew, and I'm going to serve the bream on top of that stew, okay, so the taste there will really complement this fish. Here I've got a pan that's been on the heat for quite a while, it's, it's building up the, the heat on there, it's going to turn it down a bit. Here I've got some red onion, I've just diced about one red onion that's diced and one clove of garlic. garlic. Move it around a little bit, don't want this to burn so I'm going to keep it moving off the heat a little bit, nice and hot. Okay, then into there I'm going to pop the chorizo. I'm going to use about 100 grams there. Move that around, stirring around, getting those oils from the chorizo out there. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that for a couple of seconds to see all the oil that's coming out of the chorizo there and that's going to really make that sauce. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pop my chickpeas in there and again this is one tin of chickpeas. I'm going to put around about 120 millilitres of stock and I'm going to leave this now just to cook away for a short while. One tablespoon of tomato puree in there, okay, and again you don't have to be exact with these ingredients. You can mix and match, you can put in as much or as little as you want. It's not crucial, it's not like baking, okay? And I'm just going to put on the lid because we're on the key side, it's a little bit windy, just so that cooks away and reduces a little bit. While the switch residue is just reducing down, I'm going to uh, prep some tomatoes. These are fresh tomatoes, just going to dice them into chunks. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to put our tomatoes in there, pop our lid back on. While the tomatoes are cooking and the arm is steaming, I'm just going to roughly chop some parsley and coriander, and that's going to go in there to add another dimension and a bit of colour as well, a little bit of green. My stew is nearly there. If you have a look, it is bubbling away. Those tomatoes are starting to, starting to cook down turn them back up. I'm just going to pop a little bit more tomato puree in there. About another half tablespoon went in then. I'll just turn that over. Okay, so while that's cooking down and finishing we're going to cook our fish. It's really simple, it cooks really really quickly and we're going for a nice crispy skin. Now to do that what we need to do is have our oil really quite hot. Yeah, and I'm going to flour this fish just on the skin side only. So make sure this is really really dry Yeah, because if it's wet it's just going to turn the flour into a batter. So we've got our dry fish, it's been scaled, I'm just going to place that into the flour and press it down. I'm not going to put flour onto the flesh, I only want it on the skin. So as you can see there, I've got my flour, so I'm going to put it flesh side down, and I'm going to do that same to the other side, the other fillet, push that down, and just check that it's all coated. There we go. Okay, so that's all ready to go. Now you've got to be really careful if you're using hot oil. Make sure you haven't got too much in the pan. And when you're laying it in the pan, lay it away from you so you don't get splashed. So popping this in the pan, like so. Just hold that down. 
Now don't be tempted to start shaking and being all chefy at this point in the kitchen. What you want to do is just leave that till it starts colouring. Okay, you can have a quick peek, but don't start turning it over. So as you can see here, the protein is going white around the edges. So that means it's cooking there. And the heat will come all the way through. That's going to take a couple of minutes, no longer. It's really nice, simple fish to cook. Okay, while that's cooking, I'm just going to take my switch. So it's stew here is looking really good. It's reduced down. It's nice and bubbling. I'm just going to pop in my fresh herbs into there. And I'm going to give those a stir around. Now I'm going to check my fish. Again, just lifting it up and over. Don't worry if it's come off a little bit, it's not a problem. And there. Okay, so you want that nice, light, crispy colour on it. Okay, so we're going to cook it on the other side for around about a minute. Okay, so the fish is nearly there. It's been cooking around about two minutes on each side. So I'm just going to finish this off with a little bit of butter, a little bit of decadence there going in. And that's just going to give it a little bit more flavour as well before you finish it off. So a little bit of butter. If you put, cooked it in butter, it would burn. Yeah, so you start off in oil and we're just using that butter just to baste it. Yeah, just to give it that little bit of more flavour. So just finishing it off with a little bit of butter. Okay, so I'm just going to take the fish net out of the pan. I'm just going to leave it on here just to, to rest for a couple of seconds. Quick sprinkle of smoked paprika. Okay, so I think now we're about ready to serve up. So I've got my stew. I'm going to take my uh, spoon, just give that a mix. I'm going to put a base of the chorizo stew on the bottom of the pan there. Okay. Take my fish. I'm just going to place that over the top. So that's the finished dish. You could garnish that with a little bit of parsley or some coriander. There we have our chickpea and chorizo stew with pan-fried gilt head green.